There's been a whole litany of these types of gaming handheld devices popping up, most of them pretty cheap and most of them running on Android with the sole purpose of playing retro games. Some of them will try to market themselves as like a streaming device, but we know what they're really there for. There's also been a few very expensive devices that are like laptop replacements. They're big, expensive Windows tablets with controllers slapped on the sides. Well, once Valve unveiled the Steam Deck, all these companies saw the potential in that middle ground, something that can play the graphically powerful games that you have on your desktop at home, but portably, with, in some cases, little compromise to graphical fidelity and an actual reasonable price. Now you've got Ein with the Loki, you've got Anbernic with the Win 600, and the first one that I've gotten to get my hands on, Aya Neo with the Air. It's sleek, it's comfortable, it's powerful. It's got a whole ass Ryzen 5 5560U in here. It feels really good to hold and play, and that OLED screen is gorgeous. There's a lot that this thing has going for it, but this one is $650 which is significantly more than a Steam Deck. And it's straight up Windows, which comes with a whole lot of other problems that you might expect. It allows you to play more games than what a Steam Deck is capable of, which is really cool. My biggest complaint of the Steam Deck is that I can't squat up on Fortnite or Warzone on there. But getting to that point where you can play Fortnite or Warzone probably isn't worth it to most people. There's some compromises to be had here. A lot to consider before paying that extra money for full Windows gaming. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Okay, so far you've done a lot to try to explain to people why they need Surfshark. You've done the whole infomercial thing. You uh -huh. did some light kidnapping. Let's not talk about that. You even had a little tiny you sucking on your own nipple. Yeah, uh -huh, that's right. What else do you got? Okay, so I think I know what we need. You know how VPNs can help you change your location so that you can access content that might otherwise be blocked in your country, mm -hmm. or it can help you Encrypt your data so that nobody on your network can see what you're doing. Uh-huh, yeah. All right, this is um, Surfshark Dog. Okay, so what does this have to do with the whole changing your location thing? Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't have anything to do with that. Just thought it was a, thought it was a cool dog. Surfshark can also help you send and receive files securely and protect your important data. So if you want to give Surfshark a try, all you have to do is... Don't jump, don't jump. Thank you. So if you want to give Surfshark a try, all you have to do is click the link in the description below and use code WOLFDEN for a whole 83% off plus three months for free. That's a whole lot of deal. Okay, so I don't exactly get this idea, but you've done a really good job so far, so I trust you. See, that's exactly what your problem is. You should. Right. Aya Neo sent me a bunch of pretty cool stuff with the Air. A cool TomTok case, an additional charger with three USB-C ports and a USB-A. I'm actually using it to charge my audio interface right now. A Gully Kit King Kong Pro in white, which is one of my favorite controllers. I don't have a white one though, but I do have a video on that already. The reason why they sent me that is because this thumbstick uses hall sensing technology similar to that Gully Kit King Kong Pro. I'm pretty sure Gully Kit designed these thumbsticks for Aya Neo. Hall sensing basically means that the thumbstick uses magnets, so nothing's rubbing in there. So the thumbsticks won't deteriorate as quickly as a normal thumbstick would. That means no drifting, at least not in your lifetime or not in the lifetime of the Aya Neo Air. You'll probably get bored of it before it starts drifting. They also sent me this awesome Nufi keyboard. I've always wanted to try a Nufi keyboard and this one, with the Game Boy colors is right up my alley. I love this retro inspired design. I'm pretty sure the reason why they sent these out is because you kind of need a keyboard in order to set up the Aya Neo Air or else it's gonna be a, a, a bad time. You can get yourself around Windows 11 with touch controls pretty easily, but the screen is so small that tapping things can be very difficult. 
You can scale on-screen elements, but it's already scaled so much by default as it is that things frequently fall off already. And that on-screen keyboard is just way too tiny. You can use it, it just sucks using it. It's way more convenient with a Bluetooth keyboard. When I first unboxed this thing and set it up, I immediately hated it. It was not a fun experience. It was mostly Windows 11's fault, but when I'm buying a new device, I don't expect it to be riddled with DLL errors on my first boot. Okay, whatever. Up oh, and another error. Up oh, and the same error. Up oh, and I'm, okay, and I'm getting a lot of DLL errors. Okay, and we're finally here. All you have to do when you're setting up this thing, little tutorial for you, ignore every DLL error that you get. So like, this thing could be optimized better. You're also gonna wanna do all of the Windows updates and the driver updates for the Ryzen GPU, just like you would do on a normal computer, but a little less streamlined, and not at all what you would normally do on a gaming handheld. And then you can go ahead and install the games you're looking to play. Just like the older, more expensive Aya Neo, this thing has multiple processor and fan modes. If you're playing a less power intensive game, you can scale the processor and fan back a little bit. All my testing was done at the max because for the most part, I was always trying to push this thing to its limits. Damn, I've had this on for like an hour and a half and we're already at 13% battery. <laughs> and let me tell you, this thing gets hot. It's not that loud, but it does blow a lot of hot air out the top. So I guess that means they did a good job designing the cooling on this thing. I didn't really get to do too much emulation stuff on this thing because I really don't think this is the machine to get if you want portable emulation. There's cheaper and easier to set up stuff than this, including the Steam Deck. But the first game that I tried on here out of all the games was Smash Brothers Melee in Dolphin. And it ran pretty good. About on par with what I've tried on the Steam Deck, maybe even slightly better. I'll give it points though, this OLED screen is much nicer. There's still some slowdown, but it's been a lot worse on some other devices. The Aya Neo does perform significantly better. My biggest issue is, again, the UI. Everything's tiny, and full screening it introduces some other problems. But I will say, Dolphin recognized the gamepad just fine. Dolphin usually has an issue recognizing controllers and especially built-in gamepads, but it recognized everything here just fine. I just wanted to remap two of the buttons for Melee specifically. I'd recommend taking a page out of Russ's book over here and putting something like Retrobat or some sort of overlay on here so it's easier to play all of your emulators on a device that you would want to navigate with a controller. The next game that I tried was Valorant. Now, Valorant doesn't allow you to play with a controller, so this test is really just for funsies. It's not really practical at all. But I have used the older Aya Neo Next in a pinch when I needed to play some Valorant, and it worked fine. Unfortunately, the air breaks it. Something to do with the anti-cheat or something. So that's a bust. Next up was Fortnite, and there was some slowdown running at the default 1080p, 30 frames per second, but for the most part, it ran fine. I wouldn't mind playing a whole game like this. I tried to lower the resolution to 720p so I can bump the frame rate up, and that broke the game and took me an absurdly long time to unbreak because I couldn't reach the settings anymore. So for Fortnite, leave it at default. Halo plays just fine. The frame rate is pretty low, but it's steady and consistent, and it looks pretty good on here. And Warzone really made this thing struggle. It defaulted to about 720p, 60 frames per second, but only really got 30, and dipped down below 20 a lot. It was playable. The slowdown didn't affect the gameplay that much. These are all games that you can't play on Steam Deck at all, unless you put Windows on it and do a lot of finagling. So that's why I picked these. They're also just games that I'm interested in. I think the biggest problem here is that all of these sorts of shooters expect you to have a pretty decently sized screen, like you're gonna be playing in your living room on a computer monitor or something. You need to be able to see people that might be a decent amount away from you. This form factor is very nice and this screen is really nice, but it is very tiny and it's very hard to see people and it's very hard to line up your shots. And it especially doesn't help if a game needs to scale the resolution weirdly in order to compensate for that low GPU performance. Fall Guys ran great though, but that's not as exciting. You can play that on your Switch and it's cross-play. 
There's kind of no beating this OLED screen though. This is a higher resolution and you can see the pixels on here, but it's so nice and big. It's a little washed out compared to this one though. The draw here is that you can play powerful games, games that you normally wouldn't be able to play in such a tiny form factor. And it's comfortable and sleek. I love the design way more than the Steam Deck. It's got this sweet pink to blue metallic gradient on the top, which goes perfectly with my aesthetic. Although that retro inspired one that matches this keyboard would go a little bit better. I'm really not a fan of these weird red accents. They don't really go with the rest of it, but I do really like the white. I do like that it's got two USB-C ports, one on the bottom and one on the top. So you can plug in a bunch of stuff. You can charge it from the top if you wanna rest it down like this. You don't wanna have a big cable sticking out of the bottom. I like that it has a full-sized headphone jack, micro SD card support. And you're dead, and you're dead. Lots of fan space. The analog triggers feel really good. I'm not a big fan of the fingerprint reader. It takes like three tries to get it right every time, but it's a lot better than the iNeo Next. The D-pad feels really good. The buttons feel really good. The thumbsticks are a little tiny, but they're fine, I guess. But best of all, it's small. It's not the monstrosity that the Steam Deck is. It's more like a Switch Lite, just slightly wider and a decent amount thicker, which is, I think, perfect. It's kind of exactly like an Ein Odin, which has been my favorite portable emulator so far and probably still is because this isn't really a portable emulator. It does so much more and it should because this is more than double the price of an Ein Odin. The Ein Neo Air is here to compete against the Steam Deck and it does a lot more than the Steam Deck. But what I love about the Steam Deck is how easy it is to get in there and just download a game. Aya Neo tries to channel this ease of use with their Aya Space launcher, but it's nowhere near the breeze that SteamOS is. You can just replace the Aya Space launcher with Steam Big Picture mode if you want, but it's still not the same as having a dedicated device made specifically for SteamOS. You could also just straight up put Windows on a Steam Deck. I haven't done that myself because it seems like a little bit of a pain in the ass the way you got to do it right now. And some of the drivers aren't optimized and it breaks certain things, but this thing isn't exactly optimized either. So if you're going to finagle around with this thing to get it to work right, you might even be better off just getting a Steam Deck and finagling around with that in order to get it to run Windows and play your Fortnites and your War Zones. Another big draw to the Aya Neo Air over something like the Steam Deck is availability. If you wanna purchase a Steam Deck right now, you're not gonna get it until later this year, which is honestly way quicker than I was expecting. A lot of other devices that I've reviewed, like the Playdate or the Analog Pocket, those, if you purchase one now, you're gonna be waiting until next year. In the Analog's case, late next year. It might just be worth waiting for a Steam Deck, unless you absolutely have to play a game that doesn't run on Steam OS or on Linux, in which case, you have two options. You can get the Aya Neo Air, or you can just buy a Steam Deck and put Windows on it. Well, after all that, it still gets a little complicated. There are three different versions of the Aya Neo Air, all with varying solid state drive sizes. This one is the Aya Neo Air regular old version with 16 gigabytes of memory. There's a pro version with a better GPU and double the RAM, and there's a light version with half the RAM and the same GPU that's in this one. Also, this is the 512 gigabyte version and it was plenty of space to fit Valorant, Warzone, Fortnite, Fall Guys, Halo, all of my ROMs and there's room to spare. And it also has an expandable micro SD card slot. So you've got plenty of space here. And this middle ground one is $600 if you get it on Indiegogo right now, and then you have to wait God knows how long to get it. And it'll be $650 if you miss the boat on that and buy it at retail. So I really don't know if there's a specific game that you can't play on the Steam Deck, but is it really that power intensive? Then sure, you can get the cheaper Aya Neo Air, but that's only gonna save you like a hundred bucks max. That $500 price point would be perfect for a Steam Deck competitor, but 
I think this device proves that it might not be worth it. There are some very specific use cases where I can see this being a good purchase, but this space is filled with devices that are probably better suited for what you want. Maybe this could be your all around go-to for emulation and AAA gaming. Maybe you do want to customize it to your heart's content, in which case, good on you. Maybe it's a good purchase. Like I said, it's a perfect form factor. Just know you'll probably be fighting against it for a bit until you're able to get it the way you want it. Just did a cool thing where my test bar disappeared and I can't get it back. You're also probably gonna be paying a pretty penny for it. And I and Neo has also been known to release a new device every few months. So by the time you get this in your hands, it might already be time for the next new hot thing. So what do you guys think about the Aya Neo Air and all of these Steam Deck competitors that are popping out? Is there something that you want this thing to be able to do and with that make it more interesting for you? More interesting than something like a Steam Deck or the Switch that you probably have already. Is there something your current gaming devices can't do that this would benefit from? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter and any and all of this other social media garbage. You see this shirt? This is the Nintendo podcast shirt. You can get it over at, uh, you can buy with the Wolf Dead Apparel stuff. It's like the same store. You can, you'll figure it out. Thank you Surfshark for helping sponsor this video. You can check them out. And thank you Zim for being a good boy. A lot of the clips you saw today were taken from Twitch where I live stream sometimes me screwing around with stuff like this. So join us over on twitch.tv slash Wolf if you want to see more of that. Or you can see the unboxing of this thing over on youtube.com slash Wolf Clips. If you don't want to sit through a whole live stream, there's a nice condensed version of it over there. But of course, the most important thing that you can do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here so you know when there's new videos coming out because YouTube's not going to tell you about every single one unless you're subscribed. Share this video with a friend, a friend who is maybe interested in a powerful PC gaming device like this. Maybe you're always trying to squat up with them in Fortnite and they're never around. This will help keep them around. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a very good week.